So here we are now at step number 21. Give your H1 elements a class of bold. So let's find our H1 elements and just give it the class of bold. And now you can see that that font weight has been applied to the H1 too. This is the best way to use CSS. We just create one type of class that does a job. And then whenever we want something to have that job, we can just go into our HTML and give it the class. So here, uh, no, that's not going to work at all. Okay, uh, here for this P, I could say class equals, oh, yeah, class equals bold. And now that P will automatically become bold as well. Okay, so let's remove that. And that means it's very easy to change things around. Step number 22. Horizontal spacing between equally important elements can increase the legibility, readability of your text. Wrap the text two thirds of a cup, 55 grams in a span element and give it a class of write. Okay. So we want to find this text and we're going to put it in a span. We've never used a span element before. We're going to use it today. And indeed our span is going to have a class type. And that class is going to be called write. We're not going to see any changes right now, but we're going to go into our CSS here and we're going to give that class write a float property. Okay, so we say dot write. We're going to say float write. And look what happens. It floats on over to the right hand side. So that looks a little bit better, a little bit more professional, and much, much easier to read. Step number 24. Put everything inside the label element in a new header element. Okay, so all of this is going to be now inside a new header. So I'm going to tab it over, come down here, open header, and come down to the bottom and close my header. It's very important, as I say, guys, that our code is easy to read. That's why I'm taking the time to space everything out properly. Step number 25, update your H1 selector to be header H1 to specifically target your H1 element inside your header. So header, instead of just saying H1, we're going to say header H1. Now that narrows the focus. That's not going to apply to a H1 that is not inside the header. And to see that, I'll go outside the header. I'm going to put a new H1. I'm going to say, hello, and close that H1. And you can see, look, the font weight is not set to 800 like it is up here because we're targeting only H1s inside the header. That's called scope, and it's an incredibly important concept inside CSS. Understanding scope is half of the battle. 26, create a new div under your header and give it a class of divider LG. Very interesting. So we're going to open a new div here, class, uh, and this div is below our header, so it should be here. Div, div class equals, and we're going to say divider, divider LG. And I'm going to come down here and close the div so that I don't forget. And let's check our code there. So now we have another horizontal line going across. Create a new LG selector and give it a height of 10 pixels. Also create an LG MD selector and set the background color to black. Excellent. So dot LG dot LG. And we're going to give this a height. 
we're going to set that to 10 pixels. That pushes the line down. And now we're going to say dot LG comma dot MD squarely brackets. For dot LG comma dot MD, we are going to say background color. We're going to set that to be black. And we see now that the MD class. Now I'm I'm quite interested to see what's going on here with the MD class, because I believe in our HTML, we have not created any class called dot MD. Uh, let's look at my CSS again. We certainly have not, but the LG, the LG class has filled in with a background color of black and our code has passed. You may notice there's a small border at the bottom of your LG element. Oh yes, if we look very closely there. You can see a small gray line. To reset this, give your LG.MD selector a border property set to zero. Border, we're gonna set that to zero. So that gray line has gone now. So how come when we had a, uh, a divider class before, it had a border, but this one doesn't? Well, that's because .lg.md is more specific. It has a closer, more focused scope. Create a new div below your LG element and give it a class attribute set to calories info. Okay, so this div is going to go below the divider. Okay, so div class equals we're going to call this one calories dash info. Excellent. And now let's close our div. Control and enter. Of course, we see nothing because we've done nothing inside there yet. But inside, we're going to have a P element with a class of bold SM dash text, small text, and give the text amount per serving. Okay. Ah, I think I know what LG stands for. LG stands for large, right? Yes. And MD, uh, I think MD might stand for medium. I think. We'll see. But SM is definitely what we're using as code for small. Okay, so uh, create a P element. P. Give it a class. And the class is going to be equal to bold sm dash text so these are two different classes we're giving it two classes the class of bold and the class of sm text the text is going to say amount per serving then we're going to close our p oh we do have an issue amount per serving have i made a typo i have i've given it a capital s i'm so sorry that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.